The following Evolution Archer Travel training session is brought to you by America's favorite vacation company. Thursday. Today is Thursday, May 7th, it's a little bit after 3 p.m. Pacific time. I'm Jose Lambert of Archer Travel Service. And look who's with me. Say hello, Susie. Oh, it's Susie. Susie in the bushes. Look. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Uh, we're glad you're back. Uh, we're going to visit a great destination. Today. We're going to visit our backyard, the wonderful state of California, specifically Southern California, where there's a lot to do. Um, but first off, you know, let's talk about some of the great giveaways that you guys have had i want to big, uh, give a big shout out to mona lisa who won one of the videos yesterday um one of the uh, videos uh packages that she won yesterday during the training call that we had and um so we had yeah we had yeah we had four winners from the taj yesterday so congratulations guys keep oh. it up you know watching these webinars but there was four win winners yesterday from from taj so Way to go, guys. This is one, yeah, Chaz, Chaz Hotel. So, really nice. So, be sure you tune in and watch these webinars. There's a lot of great prizes you can win. So, yeah. if and, you're and, here, and Chaz, about, and you're getting, yeah. I'm going to talk go about one of them today before we start getting into the geography. But, uh, hey, Amanda, let's do a big shout out to all the agents that arrive early. Okay, awesome. Um, do you want me to do okay. it or do you want to do it? Oh, you sure, Amanda. Give it correct. <laughs> okay. Well, let me pull this mic back over to me. Um, sorry. So, we have Lavise Howard, uh, Laura, Twinkle, Elizabeth, Gina, Monica, Gracelle, Jan, Jan oh, sorry. Woo! I gotta speak clearly. Uh, Janet, Donna Fontaine, Elizabeth, Horace, and then to our YouTube people, oh my gosh, sorry guys, I am working 11 hour days and my voice is not working right now, um, Cheryl Shires, Nancy, Carl Pratt, Wendy, and some more people, I'm sorry I cannot pronounce your names, but welcome okay. all and we appreciate you all coming today. All right, thank you guys. I really appreciate you guys always coming in and attending these webinars. Please tell your other agent friends, your other team members to come in and, you know, watch these. We're, we're, you know, I'm going to be talking to Amanda and, and Reggie about maybe about us doing a little bit more giveaways for each webinar. So that'll be kind of fun. So let's go to this announcement first, okay, Susie? And then we'll go into okay, the Okay, go ahead. Let's go to the PowerPoint. Okay. All right, let me know when you're there. Da, 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 da. Okay, check this out. Vax Vacation Access, May Madness. If you go to Vax, okay, you'll see it. It's on the left-hand side. You'll see the, the box for May Madness. Let me tell you what this is. This is what the press release was. Let's get ready to rumble. It's time for May Madness on Vax. It's like the big NCAA basketball tournament held every March, but instead of college students, the players are you travel advisors and instead of basketball games we have learning games throughout may you will have the chance to compete in three games with three chances to win prizes no bracket busters here we'll give you hints on the trick to your question to give everyone a shot at cutting down the net that's a basketball term for winning go ahead pump it up they have one now that's going to uh end on the may 10th so i want you to go in there and go and register and, and check it out I think the first prize is a $50 gift card. So go in there and check it out, you guys. It's a lot of fun. It's a great way to learn. And you'll have a really good time. So really go in there and check that out. It's Main Madness, and that's on Back Vacation Access. Again, another place where they're giving a giveaway. All right? All right, so let's go to the maps now. Very cool. This is great. You know, the, our suppliers are um, providing this kind of you know, interaction to keep you motivated and going forward during this time. So thank you very much, Vax, and Jose, thanks for presenting this to them. Yeah. Okay, um, we're doing today the rest of California. Last week we did Northern California, 
Today we're going to focus on Southern California. So here's the map of the United States. You can see where beautiful California is, where it's we're located here. Very hot today, huh, Jose? What is it, 95? Oh, my God, yeah. Easy. yeah it's been hot the last yep. couple of days. We got a heat so wave. Heat down. wave is coming. Yeah. So, um, again, we're in the state of California to the extreme west. So we can go ahead to the next map, which is um, the western states. Go ahead, Amanda. So here we are. California, again, is bordered by um, Nevada, Oregon, and Arizona. Um, I have a little recall from last week. I noticed <laughs> that you noticed. Um, I had a snafu. I said that Washington was above California, and some of you were paying attention. And it's, of course, I know better. It's not Washington. It's Oregon, Susie. So I'm glad to see that somebody corrected me. I'm like, oh, my God, what the heck was the matter with me? So, anyways, here we are. <laughs> I do pay attention sometimes. So, thank you for those that noticed I put the states in the wrong order. I do know where they belong. So, so here we are um, with, the, with the bordering states of our beautiful state of California. So, here we go to the next map. And this is going to be the state of California. Whoa, here we go. Almost got dizzy. All right, so last week we did uh, San Francisco, the northern part of California, and today we're going to be doing the southern part of California. From about, um, we're going to do from about Santa Barbara all the way down to San Diego. This is quite a stretch here along. It looks like it's short, but any of those that have been in this state know that there's no such thing as a short way from point A to point B in this state. Everything is a long way. We have traffic. It's a beautiful ride, though. Um, Santa Barbara is gorgeous, and you would come down to California, um, I'm sorry, to Los Angeles and to our beach areas, Long Beach, um, then you'd go to Santa Ana, Pasadena, that's kind of close where we're at, where Pasadena is. So we'll go ahead and go to the next map, which is going to be, I think it's the Inland Empire, if I'm not mistaken. No, it's, it's this one, Southern California. Oh, sorry, Southern California, I missed it. So Southern California, here we go. Again, I didn't mention last week Santa Barbara, which is up to the north here. Santa Barbara's got some absolutely beautiful, uh, there's some old um, missions there. It's a beautiful beach resort. There's some beautiful wineries here and restaurants like you can't believe. Those are that you remember Ronald Reagan, he has his ranch up in this area. It's really right. pretty nice up right. there. It's a beautiful, beautiful destination. There's also a beautiful um, university there. It's University of Santa Barbara, UCSB. But this whole area is very historic. It's um, a lot of old buildings. There's a lot of history in Santa Barbara. So I would highly recommend if you have a chance to go up in Santa Barbara and start working your way south. From Santa Barbara, hey, then yeah. we have Oxnard. Go ahead. No, no. Hey, so okay. One of the things okay. I, I, I want... I want these agents to know is how wonderful this weather is. You, you remember we had this old news anchor, right, named Jerry Dumpy, that you could go from the mountains to the sea, like in 90 minutes, you can go from skiing to surfing. You know, if the, if, that's how crazy the weather is here. How each of these different places in Southern California, like, like for example, you see up north there where it says Lancaster Pondale, that gets really, really hot. But then when you go see like a place like Westminster and Torrance and Long Beach, those places are usually much cooler because they're by the ocean. All right, and that's what makes it so comfortable in this day. You get a little bit of everything. And, and Jose yeah. is right. Jerry Dunphy used to say from from the ocean to the, at least in the desert to the ocean, to, what you could get, yeah, yeah. the desert to the ocean. You've got it all here. We've got some wonderful ski destinations in Southern California. Um, Last week we talked about Lake Tahoe, Heavenly Valley, a great ski destination during winter time. California, the southern part of California, we have an area, it is called Mammoth Mountain. It's probably one of the most great ski destinations. Um, oh, yeah. It's very highly rated in California. You've got from beginner all the way up to the top of the mountain for those people that are extreme skiers. So we're very fortunate here in California. Within you know, 90 minutes to two hours, you can be, like Jose said, you can be at the beach or you can be at the desert or you can be in the mountains. So as yeah. we continue south, um, we come to, um, from Oxnard, again, this is the coastal area of Malibu, then we're in Los Angeles. 
um, Torrance, Compton. We have a lot of little cities here you probably all hear about. There's Pasadena well, let's, let's, right let's, there. Let's go to the next slide. Let's go to the next slide because we, we'll show them some okay. skiing areas. Here we go. Look at this. There we go. Okay, so up uh, towards Running Springs, we have um, to the north here where you see San Bernardino, we have Running Springs. Big Bear, I don't know if we can see yeah, Mammoth can see here or not. Is there Mammoth, no, mammoth there, Running Springs? Okay, Mammoth yeah, is a little see. bit north of here, but there's Big Bear, perfect. And then we have Running right. Springs, that's kind of a more beginner ski area. We also have Lake Arrowhead, um, great summer destination here. It's beautiful, oh, yeah. you can rent some boats here. It's very lush and foresty up there with that beautiful lake. So that's a really fun place to go. So as you Let me can tell see, you, I California. Went there, I, I, went, I went to Lake Arrowhead uh, as a Boy Scout, Boy Scout camp. Boy Scout camp really there, right. it, yeah, yeah, there's a Boy Scout camp up there, which it's like Alpine. Uh, again, it's so weird, that this, this, this geography of this place. It's like you're in the city, and then you're all of a sudden you think you're like in a Swiss chalet. Up there, Big Bear is so beautiful. San Bernardino it is. Forest is that's absolutely beautiful. But one of the things I, I want to uh, explain is this area is called the Inland Empire. Everything east of Los Angeles, okay, like when you see there where it says where Pico Rivera and West Covina start, everything east of there is called the Inland Empire. And it has its own, you know, um, um, commerce, its own economy. It, it, it has big cities like Riverside and uh, the Cabina and San Bernardino and Redlands um, all leading out there. So it, it's a really kind of cool. It, 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 it's very so, cool. Just yeah. so you know. Yeah. So we've also got Pomona here. We have a great fair here in summertime. It's, it's Pomona. Also, there's a racetrack out in Pomona. A lot of you probably have heard about, uh, this is kind of cute, Rajakukamunga. That used to be an old, um, it used to be an old winery area out there. It's grown a lot, Fontana. Um, just really quick, I want to kind of let you guys know where we're located here. Over, um, if you go toward past Pasadena, there's a little city called Glendale. That's kind of right where we're at. We're in this Glendale, Pasadena area, so that's where Archer Travel is located. So you all know where we're calling from and where we're remote from. Um, and again, continuing on, you've got Long Beach, Torrance, Costa Mesa. These are areas, like Jose said, everything is very distinct here. They all have their little own flavor here. Um, when you get down in the Costa Mesa, Mission Viejo area, this is pretty upscale here. Um, you can yep. see there's San Juan Capistrano down there. It's where one of the missions are. Again, there's a lot of diversity in this area, and we're very fortunate to have some very nice communities here. Um, you can kind of be out when you get toward Beaumont and Banning. It's a little um, less congested and, and less populated right. there. Uh, and Susie, where are we going farther east? Let's go farther east. Let's go to the next one. We're going to go a little east, more east than that. So we're driving along on the 10, and all of a sudden, look where we, we come. We're in Palm Springs, California. Beautiful, great. Palm Springs is our high-end desert destination here. But please remember, the word is desert, okay? <laughs> and desert right, means right. hot. <laughs> now, but, but desert now, also in winter gets cold. <laughs> so, yes, yes um, but also in the springtime and in the winter, you know, this was, uh, th this is pretty historic too. This area is pretty historic. Uh, this this really started out of the 30s and 40s with the movie stars coming out here and the villagers and the developers that made this uh, this community up. Um, but one of the things about this is that let's say you don't really have the time to drive all the way to Las Vegas, but you still want to have that because it's only like an hour and a half, two hours from my house right. to get here to this place. And it's a great drive and it's a lot of fun and there's a lot of things to do here. There's a lot of things to do here. Yeah. Um, you, we've got a couple uh, communities here. You've got the main part of Palm Springs. Um, Palm Springs has some highlight destination tour things. You can do the Palm Springs aerial tramway. Um, it rises 8,560 feet to the top. You take the tram up to the top. Um, during summer, it's a really, really pretty, pretty view from up there. But also, just so you know, in winter time. Uh, you can um, take your cross-country skis up there because the height of the mountain is 8,516 feet. So you take the tram all the way up to the top. It stops and lets you off. And then 
intermediately it returns back down to to the main part of Palm Springs. Also, we've got Joshua Tree National Park there. It's um, an yeah. oasis in the middle of the desert. And like Jose was saying, this area was built up in the you know in the basic of 40s and the 50s because a lot of movie stars have their homes here. Um, there's also some great golf courses here. And as you go through this city, most of the streets and things and the the avenues are named after some of the movie stars. There's um, Bob Hope Drive, um, Frank Sinatra Avenue. There's Dean Mount Martin. Um, I think there's Dinah Shore. All of yeah. these uh, areas here have very cool names of the people who really kind of got this area started because it's very popular. Some beautiful homes here. It's very famous for some of its golf courses. There's a couple golf tournaments that are held here during the year. So you can actually okay, take, yeah. um, it's called the Palm Springs Life Tour Bus, and you can see the homes of Bob Hope, Dean Martin, um, Frank Sinatra, Marilyn Monroe. Uh, Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell still live in this area. They actually live in the Palm Desert area, so we can look at that a little bit later. Go ahead, Jose. Okay, so um, two things I want to mention about this. For you youngsters, this is where the Coachella Music Festival is. So you can set up, you know, packages where you can bring, you know, your clients that want to go to Coachella. And what's, uh, Amanda, what's the one after Coachella? The country. Uh, Stagecoach. You know, Stagecoach. Yeah. Stagecoach. Yeah. So they have this, and this is farther. In, in, you see where it says Indian Wells? It's about another five miles east of Indian Wells, where the uh, the fairgrounds are. But they have this here now. If you, you know, you can make packages. You know, if you got people in Boston or New York, I, I got to go to Coachella. You can do uh, LAX, LAX to Palm Springs, or you can drive here, um, and boy, the town gets. You can actually that. fly. Yeah, you can fly in, you know, fly into Ontario. It's a closer airport, and then rent right. your car from Ontario. It's a much closer destination from Ontario Airport, and there's very good service in Ontario. I would suggest that airport for you to use for your customers. Um, now, the other thing you can see where Coachella is, yeah. Yeah, now, the other thing I want to mention is there is gambling here, and they have some major resorts. Casino Morongo is here. Agua Caliente Casino is there. They've got a couple of them. So you can have, if you have friends that like to gamble, you can go from Casino Morongo, and then there's about another 40 minutes, isn't it, right, Susie, to get to right. Agua Caliente? And, and besides the gambling, like at Agua Caliente and Morongo, they have some big time um, stars that come there and play. I think yeah. with Mac was there not very long ago. Yeah. So yeah. this venue at very these casinos name. is more than just a casino. It has got some nightlife, and they have some stars that come uh, to, yeah. to do the venues there. So there's some very good theater going on here. So keep that yeah. in mind. We've so got a lot for you to do. Yeah, there's a lot to do here. There's a lot to do, and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Let's and go a lot to of nice class. restaurants. Yeah, a lot oh, of yeah. nice restaurants here. You know the one I wait, wait, okay. you know what, Susie? Wait, wait, wait. You know the one I I used to go to in Pottery, the one that where Frank Sinatra used to hang out? There's that restaurant, that, that famous one where he had his wedding and they had the wedding reception there which when, when he married Barbara Matt and they got all Frank's it's old school. You know, they have all Yeah, all it is old Frank school. It's the old yeah, it's the old red it's very cool. It's it's, it's an old yeah. restaurant feel when you go in you can feel like you're back in that time era. It's Again, it's there's a lot of history. There's a lot of nostalgia here. You can really feel it when you go into some of these restaurants here and you look at some of the homes. It's very beautiful. Okay, so the next map we're on, we're in uh, Los Angeles surrounding areas. Um, Los, we've got Santa Clarita, Castaic. Um, Jose, go ahead. You visited a whole lot of these okay. areas in the last month on your morning trek. So right. tell them what so, you saw I, here. <laughs> I, mean, I, don't know, I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's a, there's a PBS program here, and now they all make fun of me, because it's old. It's, a, it's about this old guy, who his name was Yule Halder. He had a funny southern accent, and he'd go to all these places in California. Now that I'm doing that in the morning with Warner, we're calling, oh, there's Jose Halder. But uh, I just want to show you some of, these, some of these cities that are really, really good. And let's just look at the beach cities for right now. You have Santa Monica, and then you have the South Bay. Where you have Manhattan Beach and you have uh, what are the other beaches down there, Susie? Uh, well, you got Palos Verdes, you got Redondo. Palos Verdes Estate. That's right. You got Long yeah. Beach. So those of you that yeah. want to know where the cruise Redondo. ship takes off from, it's right there. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. In in Long Beach area. 
right there. Uh, as you can see, the airport. Um, and these are just the cities that make up L.A. County. Los Angeles is the center of it, but this is L.A. County proper. All right. As you can see, it's a pretty large county. And uh, to the north, um, like in Palmdale and Lancaster, that's where Peggy lives. She lives way the heck over there. And that gets really hot. That's the desert out there also. Uh, but it's funny, as you come into the coast, you see the topography change from desert to trees to more foresty, and then you see the ocean. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, uh, I think tomorrow we'll probably go back to Hollywood. I, I don't know yet. But you see Burbank and Glendale. So as you can see, now look, the trick to this is if you come here, really get your map, your map quest or your Google Maps and really know where you're going because it can really mess you up and it, you can mess up your direction. I mean, I still use Google Maps when I go anywhere in Los Angeles just to make sure I get to the right place at the right time. But it, it can get rather confusing. Um, so make sure your clients know that, all right? But you know, the joke here is you could, you know, you couldn't do the five to the 210 to the, the 110 to the 160 to the 101. It used to be a big joke Johnny Carson used to say. He said, and then cut me off at the five. So look at all the right. highways we have here. Those just take you to the major cities. And once you get off the freeway here, you better know where you're going here because otherwise you're going to see places that probably aren't on this map just for fun. Right, and you don't want to go <laughs> into certain places. Now, I'm going to show you some areas you want to be careful. <laughs> right. Now, I want to show you an example. We have a freeway in L.A. County called the San Diego Freeway, right? <laughs> but it doesn't go to San Diego. It right? doesn't, it's, right. It, it does, does not go to San Diego. It says that, but that's not where it goes. It, says, <laughs> it doesn't go there. It stops in Irvine, and then it becomes the Golden State Freeway. So, so I'm like, I was wondering, why did they name it the same? Why didn't they call it just the L.A. Freeway? Or, or you know, or the Inglewood Freeway? So the big call well, up. Probably a long time. You know, Probably these freeways were a long time ago. They didn't know this is how it was going to go, so they ran out of they ran out of names. So just to confuse you when you come here, don't necessarily that's, think that the name of the freeway is going to get you where you're going. Okay. That's right. All right. So right. you want to go ahead to the next slide? So this is another here we go. Off. This is a little bit closer. This is a much better map. So like Jose said, this breaks it up into areas. You've got downtown Los Angeles. Those of you that know, we have something called the La Brea Tar Pits here. Jose, didn't you go there on one of your morning trips? I haven't tracks? gone there yet. I haven't. Oh, you haven't there. done this and yet? I, it, okay. No, and, and, and another place that's down there right by the Tar Pits, that is where the, uh, it's called LACMA, the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. And they have several, oh. several huge buildings, again, like a college campus of huge museums and galleries to go to and attend. It's really family friendly. They have a whole section. I mean, literally a whole huge section that they have art for kids where your kids can yep. just, you know, throw them in there. And, and it's really a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of stuff happens down there. It's kind of cool. It's, it's really a cool And you've, got the, you've also got the Getty Center here. Again, right. one and of I, the most beautiful museums, the Getty Center. It's spectacular. And, and I, have, I, I have gone there. Um, of course, I couldn't show them a picture of it because it's kind of weird to get that with my selfie stick. But the Getty Center, again, is like a junior college campus full of galleries and museums. And here's the thing about Getty Center. Here's the thing about it. It's free. What? Yeah, yeah it's free. The only thing you got to pay for is the parking. you got to pay and It's $15 to park your car. So if you have a family of four, that's it. next to nothing. Oh, yeah. it's worth it. It's and you can beautiful. spend a good part of the day at the Getty Center the property um, and the artwork and just just the buildings there, um, I would think it happens to be like our Hearst Castle of Southern California. That sounds kind of crazy, but the Getty Center is beautiful. It really is. Um, and then, then not of course, only on top of that, Susie, there's another Getty Museum in Malibu. It's in Malibu, that. right. That's right. right. An so then, and then we've got, you know, beautiful Beverly Hills here. Um, you can see the way the, this part of the state is kind of broken up into into sections. There's something in the San Gabriel Valley. Um, you've got Central, South Central. That's where Watson Compton is. Then you get started down now, toward Torrance. Inglewood's where you were today, isn't it? That, that's right. So as you can you see, go. Inglewood, right there, that's where we were today because I showed you the new NFL stadium that's going to be ready, hopefully, by uh, August or September. I don't know, man. They got a lot of work to do, Susie. I mean, I, I was like, are you sure you're going to be ready? Because it, it's, but 
it's almost there, but that's going to be where, where that is. And Inglewood is also where uh, uh, the the airport is, just so you know, where LAX and the is. Forum. And, um, the forum and, and the forum is there. And the forum. And the forum, the forum is another big uh, concert venue. And they also are thinking about building, uh, the Clippers are thinking about building next to the forum a new basketball stadium. So, and just right. so you guys know, downtown Los Angeles is where the uh, Staples Center is. That's where the home of the Lakers are. I mean, yeah, the home of the Lakers and the Clippers play there, the too. Disney, um, the Disney Theater is there. And the L.A. Kings. The, yeah. Hockey And the team. L.A. Kings, yeah. yeah and the yeah. Kings line. And then, as you can see, it's south. Now, this, this map doesn't really show the, the line of uh, Orange County. It doesn't. But as, it's because you see Anaheim, and it kind of starts like where Knox Farm is. That, then it becomes south of there. That's all Orange County. So, right. uh, so you've got Knott's Berry yeah. Farm, Disneyland, Legoland. You start getting into Fountain Valley. And then, as you can see, you can go down to Huntington Beach. And then as you continue south, Mission Viejo, um, then you're going to be heading toward, you're going to be heading toward San Diego at that point. Yeah. And let's, let's so this go to should the give next. you a good idea. Yeah. So we can go to the next slide. It should be San Diego, I think. Here we go. Love this place. This is great. So as you continue down and you go um, south along the highway there, not the not the San Diego freeway, but it's a different freeway, the five. <laughs> um, you're going to come to a city, La Jolla. Oh my gosh, what's oh. everything in La Jolla to love? There's so much here. Um, you've got Encinitas, and you have the Mission, San Luis Rey. I just wanted to bring up the state of California has 21 missions in it. There are quite a few missions in the state of California. Um, San Diego Mission was the first one. It's called the Mission Basilica San Diego de Alacala. It was the first Franciscan mission in the state of California. And it's located in downtown, in the downtown San Diego area. It was founded on July 16th. 1769 by Fire Junipero Serra, who was responsible for many of the 21 missions in California. So there's a lot of history in San Diego. There's Old Town. Go ahead. We've got all kinds of stuff here. Oh, God. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable what San Diego has to offer. Um, there's, you know, we've got SeaWorld. We have the most magnificent San Diego Zoo. We've got Balboa Park. Um, we've also got the SS, USS Midway Museum, which is, if we go down where the airport is, it's down by the Embarcadero. If we go, there's a gas lamp uh, district here. This is an up-and-coming place, gas lamp. Um, Jose, have you been to gas lamp? No. No, I, I never been. But I have been to the Hotel de Coronado. Cause I, where I used to end uh, was Mission, Mission Beach. and, and But Mission I Beach. stayed a couple of nights in the Hotel de Coronado. And now, as you can see, there's a bridge that, that goes out to this island, Coronado Island. Oh, yeah, this Coronado is really, Island. This is a, an incredible experience to, to go there. Now, one thing I do want to bring up about this. Now, let's say that you have folks on the West Coast and you have clients from Washington or Oregon or up north it's in the Bay Area. You know, we have a lot of agents up there. And they want to do a Disney cruise. You can do a Disney cruise. The Disney cruises come out of San Diego. And they have that here. And one of the nice features is that you can even do this. You can take the train, the Amtrak train, which is a great ride, down to San Diego, and then just take a transfer from the, the railroad station to the cruise terminal. It's really fun. It's almost right it's really across fun. the street because it's um, the train, the the ships leave from like where the Embarcadero is, as you can see it here. And the train, mm -hmm. stays, the train almost stops, um, not right. quite yeah. directly across the street, but it's very close. And it's a really right. pretty ride uh, coming down on yeah. the track. Hmm. Um, just bear with me one second. I don't know if they hung up or I'm not sure what happened. So let me just call them back. There's Jose. Um, not sure what happened, but let me get Susie on Jose. We're still live. Oh, okay. So yeah, I guess, I guess we I'm adding Susie. This is the life in the day. <laughs> so.
so let's see if Susie answers. Answer, Susie. Sorry, guys. Susie, I can't take your call right now. Please leave me a message okay. and I'll call you. Hold on one second. Um, I can't get Susie on the phone. She didn't, she wouldn't answer my call, Jose. Um. All right, well, that's okay. So, I tell you what, this is what we're going to do. This is San Diego. Um, let's do this, okay? Um, let's, let's roll this wonderful video about San Diego. I want you guys to see this. And while we're in the video, we'll try to get Susie back. Perfect. Well, let's roll the video. That's a great idea. Okay, roll in the video. San Diego stands on the west coast of the United States. Situated right on the border with Mexico, it's the southernmost city in California and is home to almost one and a half million people. Ever since the Europeans first settled here in the 18th century, San Diego has been a city whose fortunes and personality has been influenced by the warm currents of the Pacific Ocean. With a deep water harbor, the city has always been an important trading port and at one time was the tuna fishing capital of the world. Today, San Diego is the mainland home to the U.S. Navy's Pacific Fleet. San Diego's Old Town is often called the birthplace of California. This heritage precinct preserves and recreates life from the early Mexican and American periods. In the 1860s, the city's development and focus shifted to the waterfront. However, Old Town remains an important center for community and cultural celebrations. San Diego's downtown area rises straight from the water's edge. The central business district is home to some beautiful heritage buildings. But to feel the real pulse of San Diego, head to the gas lamp quarter. This 16-block historical neighborhood of Victorian buildings really lights up at night as theater-goers and university students pour into the area. A few blocks inland from downtown is the largest urban parkland in the U.S., a place where nature, culture, and fabulous architecture converge. Balboa Park features over a dozen museums, with collections ranging from automobiles to aviation, and from art to natural history. There are almost 20 different gardens to explore, including a recreation of the Alcazar Gardens of Seville. Balboa Park is laced with miles of paths and trails, which connect its many treasures, like the San Diego Zoo. This is one of the world's greatest zoological parks and one of the few places outside of China where you can come face to face with a giant panda. To truly appreciate San Diego's relationship with the Seven Seas, head to the downtown waterfront area. Here you'll find the Maritime Museum and the Navy Pier. Climb aboard the USS Midway, the longest serving aircraft carrier of the 20th century. At the nearby Broadway Pier, jump aboard a ferry and leave the busy downtown behind. It's just a short ride to Coronado, where the pace slows. Locals have been kicking back in the sunshine here since the 1880s. Just across the harbor entrance is Point Loma, place where explorer Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo first stepped ashore in 1542. Loma is Spanish for hill, and the views here are incredible. When the weather is right, you can see all the way to Mexico. Heading north, the dramatic cliffside neighborhoods of Point Loma open out into an endless string of California beaches, the kind of beaches that inspired all those Beach Boys songs. Each beachside community is unique. Mission Beach is relaxed and laid back, while neighboring Pacific Beach, with its vibrant bar scene, likes to stay up late and party. A great way to explore these coastal neighborhoods is to hire a beach cruiser and hit the promenade. 
A little further up the coast is the jewel city, La Jolla. Surrounded by ocean on three sides, La Jolla is all about pristine coastline, picturesque streets, and beautiful architecture. This is about as good as California dreaming gets. Even the sea lions agree. San Diego is a dream destination for children, too. The little ones can let their imaginations run wild in Legoland. While at historic Belmont Park, the Giant Dipper has been thrilling kids of all ages for almost 100 years. The people of San Diego have a deep abiding respect for the ocean. The Birch Aquarium plays an important part of the city's tradition in marine research and conservation. Then, of course, there's SeaWorld which has been entertaining and educating visitors from around the globe since 1964. Exploring San Diego can build up an appetite. With its proximity to Mexico and the sea, there's no prize for guessing what the specialties are. So why not wash down that shrimp taco with an ice-cold beer? Of course, the ideal way to end your San Diego day is to grab a friend or two, head to the water, and simply look to the west. Oh, we're back. Okay, we're back. What a wonderful okay, video. Back. That gives you a really good idea of, of the areas of San Diego. There's so much to do there. There really is. So yeah, um, just we're things. glad you enjoyed that. Go ahead, Jose. Things, okay, it is cooler than Los Angeles. Again, be aware of this. You fly in LA, it's going to be hot, it's going to be warm. You're going to drive down there, and usually it's 20 degrees cooler. And the other thing I want to mention about San Diego, it is right on the border with Tijuana, and it's a really great opportunity. If you if you don't, you know, have an opportunity to go to Mexico, at least they have tours to go there. You can do bus tours. They've got all kinds of tours uh, that you're, you know. Uh, Concierge can recommend to you, but really try to go there because it is a lot of fun and that's a lot of adventure to go down there too. And, and it's and, right. it's a lot and of if you yeah, and if you're going to cross the border into Tijuana, um, there's an area there before the border crossing. You can um, park your car on the on the U.S. side. Uh, I mm -hmm. don't suggest you take your car across to the to the Tijuana side if you've got a car rental, but park on the U.S. side and the tours can take off from there. And a lot of the hotels in downtown San Diego do have the day tours. Uh, down to Tijuana, which is really fun because you can do some fun shopping there. It's a fun destination, good food. So um, we just want to thank you very much. Um, I hope you've enjoyed, you know, our beautiful state of California. We did our, you know, our southern coastal gem, uh, San Diego. Um, it's a great place to visit, explore. There's something in our area for everyone. So keep it in mind, there's so much to do here. And we love when you come to California. We're happy that you're here. We don't tell you to go home. Um, a couple other things I just want to bring up is, you know, yesterday was National Travel Advisors Day, and Jose had a really wonderful letter, which really says a lot about the, the occupation that you've taken. It's, um, it's, it's a wonderful thing, and I'd just like to say congratulations um, on National Travel Advisors Day. Don't forget that you do make a difference. Um, you provide a lot of information for people. You help guide them and you give them good information. So don't forget, in the midst of chaos sometimes, there's um, also opportunity. These difficult times are giving us the opportunity to look inward, reflect on what truly matters, and connect with ourselves and our loved ones. So remember, keep the positivity, keep informed, be prepared and be proud of what you do. Um, one last thing, Jose, what are we going to say to everybody? Oh, well, wait a minute, Susie. Let me ask you, what are we doing next week? What do you think about Massachusetts? <laughs> Massachusetts, it Massachusetts. is. Massachusetts. I vote for Massachusetts. Does anybody okay. else have an idea? Yeah. Listen, you guys, if you want us to go to any state in the United States or anywhere else in the world, let us know. Send us either an email or put a comment on here and we'll go visit it, okay? Um, and we're glad to do it for you. So, oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. And everybody, and we got one shout out. Happy what? Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Yay Happy to all Mother's you great moms. So Good happy. job.
Good job. job. All right, great Thank job. you again, all of you, and we'll see you next week. Take care, be safe. Right. We'll be Bye. right back with more Back to Basics, uh, Day 13. The following Evolution Archer Travel training session is brought to you by America's favorite vacation company. Back to Basics Day 13, we're covering Archer Travel Forms. We are continuing going over some of the very first steps agents uh, have to be doing as they get ready to start their personal travel business. Uh, today's training, these Back to Basics trainings uh, happen every Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. They are for new evolution uh, team members, returning agents, hunters, uh, consultants, and recruiters. If you can't make it to these trainings, you can review the training sessions on the Facebook page, or you can find these training uh, sessions in the Travel Cafe under webinars and training videos, and click on weekly training calls. So, um, I know we went kind of long with GS for Geography, so we're going to just go straight into the PowerPoint, and then we're just going to do PowerPoint presentation, then we're going to say goodbye. So let's go to the very first PowerPoint. Okay, Archie Travel Forms. This is pretty important. This changes like every six months or so. We have to tweak the forms or something. So I wanted to introduce this to you. Uh, if you're a new agent, these are the forms that you're going to be using that you're going to need to do, okay? Um, let's go to the next slide. Okay, before we do that, um, I want to show you something. I want to share something with you. You know, clients are going to come to you and they're going to want quotes and they're going to want to see travel itineraries. They're going to want to see some things. A lot of the quotes that you're going to get from Carnival, from uh, Royal Caribbean, from FunJet, from Travel Impressions, they're kind of complicated to understand, especially for someone who's not in the travel business. They're going to go like, what, what are all these, I don't understand this thing. One of the ways to, to beat that, all right, is also is to show them when you get ready to show the presentation. So I'm going to show you two examples here, okay, what client wants. The first one is an airfare quote. The Smith Family Holiday in Hawaii. Smith Family consists of two adults, two children, Hawaii, and they want to go over Christmas and spend New Year's in Hawaii. The next one is a travel itinerary for the Smith Family European Adventure. The Smith Family, two adults, two children, they want to go to London, Paris, and they want various activities. Now, this is a way for you to shine. This is when you. This is after you've qualified the client. You've gotten the, the travel client want. You know what they want to do. And you can present this to them to present this to them. Let's go to the very first one, the airfare quote. That would be the word document. Okay, here it is. Now, this is a simple word document. You can alter it however you want to. Um, but what you want to do is give the, the concise information all right, now let's just go through this. So here you see, from my, you know, Jose Labrador, your travel agent, to Mr. John Smith at johnsmith1 at gmail.com. That's his email address. I've sent that to him, okay? These are the flights to arrive for Christmas vacation 2017. Hi, Mr. Smith, please re review the travel quotes below in regards to airfare to Hawaii, December, well, it should be December 2017. 
Travel dates. Okay, yeah, there you go. Travel dates. Let's scroll up a little bit now. Here are the travel dates are December 23rd through January 3rd. So let's stop right here. Now, as you can see here, we're going from our outbound is out of Houston, correct? It's going to go on flight one. UA stands for United Airlines. They're going to arrive in Los Angeles and have a layover time. This is important. Explaining to them, you have a one hour and five minute layover time. And you're going to get on the United Airlines flight two that's going to take you to Honolulu. So here's what I'm talking about showing concisely, nicely informed, neat, and, and, and with all the information there. It explains what time you leave and what time they arrive. Let's go down some more. Okay. The inbound flight. Wait, wait, okay. Then this is the inbound inbound flight back to Houston. All right. On January 3rd. Again, I show you here. This time we're not going to Los Angeles. We're going from Honolulu to Seattle. We're going to lay over time. Again, explaining to the client. We're going to be in, in Seattle an hour and 35 minutes. Make sure the kids know all that stuff. All right. And they depart again on United Airlines. And they arrive home at 2.32 p.m. In, in Now, let's scroll up. Okay, here's the estimated price breakdown that you've got. All right, how much it's going to be. Let's scroll up some more. Okay, now, the estimated, stop right here. Here's the estimated total price, the taxes and fees, and this is important. Terms and conditions apply subject to change and availability. Again, this is covering you, so if the beer rate goes up, because you know the air fluctuates and you have to explain this to the client. You know, that's what the air is today. I cannot guarantee that tomorrow. I cannot until you actually have paid for the ticket. Terms and conditions apply to the exchange and availability. Are your travel agent? There's the website of your website. You put your email and your phone number. Now, it's up to you, you know, if you, but you can use this as a template. And then what you do, what I used to do is I used to get those folders with the clear side on it and present it to them like a book, okay? And I'm gonna show you one that's really, really nice. Let me show you. Let's go to the next one about the uh, the trip to Europe. Okay, as you can see, um, uh, let, let's, let's, let's zoom out a little bit because I wanna show them the front page, Amanda. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wanna show them the front page. Now, keep, keep zooming out. Okay, stop right there. If you take this front page and you put it like with a clear, in a notebook form with a with a clear sign on it. Doesn't that look nice and professional? And look at this. Now let's, let's close up. As you can see, I have a picture. Let's zoom in a little bit now. You see, I have a picture of London and Paris. That's where they want to go, right? And now let's scroll up a little bit. Now, here's where I got creative. The Smith family, European adventure. He didn't mention anything about adventure. I put that in there. I said, let's make that. See what I mean? You, that, and they look at it and they go, oh, you're right. We are going on an adventure. Have not, we've never been to Paris or London. This will be our first time. And as you can see, there are the dates, the presentation, when, the, the presentation date, when I'm presenting this to you, Mr. Client, okay? And this is something that they can come home and they can show it to, you know, the husband, the wife, the kids. Look at this. This is what we're going to plan to do. Now, presented by Jose Lambert, Archer Travel Agent. That's my website. I email my phone. Let's scroll up now. Okay, there, there we go. Stop. A1. Okay, to fly Los Angeles to London. There I'm explaining the air, the air portion. A3. Okay, here's, let's look at day two. Private transfer from London Heathrow to hotel. That's my travel bound. How much is it for? Uh, before it's $130. There's the hotel where they're gonna, when they're going to check in at the Fairmont. Wow, uh, Fairmount. Really, the Fairmont in London. Uh, there's the, 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 the room uh, type that they have and how much it's going to be for five nights. And I give them their itinerary. Day three, here we go. They go to London, they have London City Hop. See, so I'm explaining everything. And what do they get? They get a hop on, hop on tour in London. Choose your own pace and schedule. Stops include Tower of London, Big Ben, Buckingham Palace, and many more. Okay, so let's go up. All right, day three, so let's go up. As you can see, I, I laid that all out for that. What's the total for that going to be? Let's go up some more. You have another, uh, see the best of London on this sightseeing tour. And I, I just explain everything that what they're going to see. And, and, okay. And all right, let's go up. Go up some more. Then you have day five, day six, three days. You can do whatever you want to. Um, now we have, uh, 
page seven, they're going to go from uh, London, from the hotel to uh, the train station, where they're going to go on the Eurostar, which is the really fast uh, um, uh, train, uh, the Eurorail Star. It's just really great. Um, and there's the pricing. And then from the train station to the hotel, they're going to get a taxi, a taxi, and I've gotten all this stuff for them. Let's scroll up. And they're going to stay again at the Fairmont in Paris. But as you can see, I've broken this down. Let's go all the way up now. And this is going to be for 10 days. They're going to see everything that they want you in Paris on the hop off. And let's go up. I want to get to the last of it. And there's the return back to Los Angeles. Let's go up. Okay. And here we go. Estimated, estimated travel totals for four people. I've given them everything, but the air, the land, the tours, the Eurostar train one way, London to Paris, travel insurance for four people, there is the estimated grand total. Terms and conditions apply, subject to change and availability. You see what I'm saying there? Okay, and that looks really nice when you present that to them in a really nice one. What do you think, Amanda? I think that looks really nice. And I've even right? seen some people say, I cannot guarantee this price if not booked immediately as well. Mm -hmm. and like I think this is a really got... great format it, easy to do use too you did it on Word document didn't you yeah Word document yeah. Word document now if you want to add graphics and more things to jazz it up you guys are more com computer savvy than I am you can add that but I think this would really enhance your business and show them that, that wow they're, they're going to be like what an adventure a European adventure yeah okay let's go for it yeah let's go here's the credit card you know, this, by adding these little things like this, this creates trust. This, you know, this gives the client the idea, wow, this person really cares about where we're going. They're going to help us get to our destination that we want to see. Oh. And you care. And that's what we talked about yesterday during the, the travel advisors. Why you want to book with a travel? Because we care. So let's show out how professional we are and give them really, really good, good things like this. All right. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. Oh, Jose, I just had a quick comment. I think your format oh. is so nice, too, because it's so easy to read that they know exactly where they're going. Like, I appreciate how you did the underline of everything, and you put this all the way to the right, the the prices, instead of putting it yeah. right next to, because that would have been hard to read. And just also right. everything that was like a title of something or the title of a day or the title of something was underlined. And I just appreciated that because it looked super, super nice. So Yeah, and this is a word document. You can use this as, as a template and use this. I, I, I forward this to uh, Sean. Sean was, Sean was asking about how do I, how do I present Sean Butledge in Falcon Rouge. She was asking about how do I present a, you know, an itinerary in a, in a, in a, in a, so I sent it to him. And he really, really enjoyed it. All right, let's go back now to the PowerPoint. All right, let's talk about this bad boy, the Archer Travel Credit Card Authorization. For you new agents, this is required. Why? It is evolution agent and client protection for both you and the client. You must have this. This is required on all bookings. I'm telling you, this is required on all bookings. The evolution agent's responsible for this. If a booking goes fraudulently or you got tricked or something happened. Of course, we have some errors and omissions, but sometimes they don't work for fraud. Errors and omissions doesn't work for fraud. But that's why I'm saying it's up to the evolution agent's responsibility to have this. You keep this. You do not send it to uh, Archer Travel. You keep it. Now, I would suggest as you keep these documents to put them in a private place because you're getting really uh, you know private information you're getting credit card information and you're getting also the california id or the driver's license or state id okay so must include copy of front and back of credit card it must must include copy of the driver's license or state id or a passport that's fine too all right let's go to the evolution travel cafe and i'm going to show you where the form is Okay, here we are in the Evolution Travel Cafe. You're going to go to Forms. Forms. Okay. And as you can see, the, the very top box is download the credit card authorization form. So let's download it and let's, let's show you what it looks like.
Okay. Um, okay. Okay. As you can see here, um, we have... Actually, hang on one second. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, can we zoom into that? Um, sorry, my form just closed. Let's try again. It's making me agree to the terms, my bad. Okay. Okay. As you can see here, all right, a lot of this is left blank that you can put in your information. On the top box, it says um, independent contractor business name. Um, you fill this in. Um, it also says independent contractor business. You fill all this information in, all right? Um, then you fill it in and you, you get all the information in here. You, you, then you have the client sign it. You put everything in here. You fill in all this information, all right? And you have the client sign it and date it, and then you hold on to it. Now, again, what's needed with this document is you need a copy of the credit card back, front and back, and the driver's license. Like I said, this is for your protection and for your client's protection. If you go, well, I don't need to do this. Well, yeah, you do. Because why? And, and what you say then is like, look, this Carnival Cruise is at $1,657.32. That's all I'm going to take from your credit card. I want to make sure that that's all you see. All right, I'm protecting your credit card. That's all we're going to take. If you see other charges and other stuff on there, that's when you have to call your bank. That something's going on with it, right? So that's that one. Hey, Amanda, let's go to the uh, go back to the forms if we can, mm -hmm. and we'll do the. Uh... Okay, all right. While we're here, um, uh, let's go to group booking form. Now, if you have a group cruise or if you have a destination wedding. As you can see right here, when you click on group booking form, it automatically populates out below the box how to fill it in. And it's right here. If you have a group cruise, or if you have a group of, um, booking of, uh, um, you know, let's say a destination wedding or a family reunion or something like that, that's where that form is, okay? Now, let's go to the major important one, which is your booking and commission tracking form for everything else. And that one is located in your evolution, um, peopletravelagent.com website. You go to the dashboard, log in there, and if you scroll down, you'll see it right here. It's the mission tracking form. Boom, there it is. You must fill this out to get paid. You must fill this out. I don't know why agents don't do this. I've spoken to several agents <laughs> who started this. This is your money that they make the booking, everything's great, blah, 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 and this is the last thing. In our trainings, I told you, after you've done the booking, complete the booking form right away. I'll repeat it again. After you've gotten off the phone with the client, okay, yeah, I got you your tickets to go to Cancun, I got everything set, you're all set, I, I sent everything, punch out, travel, you got everything, you got air, airline tickets, everything, boom. Thank you, Mr. Client, boom. Commission tracking form next. Because you know why? Agents forget. Agents forget, and it kills me. I got agents calling me up going, oh man, they went on that cruise three months ago and I forgot to do my booking and commission tracking for them. How are we gonna pay you? That's the only way we can track down how we can pay you. So this is important. As you can see, there's even a video. <laughs> you see, if you don't understand, there's okay. even a video tutorial awesome. on how to do this, how to work it. It's pretty easy. You pick, choose type of travel, and there's uh, John and, uh, and Krista, when they built this, you can actually see how to work this. So if you want to learn how to do it, there you go. But basically, it's please choose the type of travel. As you can see, it says cruise, package, car only. Um, can we go back? That, that's it. okay. It's, hey, there it is. It, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Now, okay, it even has one here. Didn't they have one? Okay, if you see here, it says commission tracking form here. If you have a group booking, please click here, and it will take you to the group booking form. So it'll take you, see, boom, there it is, it takes you there. So that's that. Those are really the 
most important ones that we want to go to, okay? Um, and then let's just go to the last PowerPoint slide. Um, okay, yeah. Our, the Archie Travel Commission Tracking Form. Why? It must be filled out to receive commission. Fill out right away as soon as booking is completed. Go to, and we went, I showed you where that is. Let's go to the next slide. Archie Travel Group Booking Form. Why? It must be filled out to receive commission. Fill out right away as soon as the booking is completed. And we showed you where that was. Let's go to the last one. And then, of course, if you ever need any support, we are here for you. There's my email address. That's the way that you can contact us. So that is pretty much it. Any questions? No, we got to lose Um, I'm going to pull the mic back over to me and you. Okay. Um, there's, I don't see any questions, but there is a comment. Um, I have all my credit okay. card authorization form filled out, but I'm having trouble with a refund. Oh, I think I know who this is. I think I know who this is. Is this Latanya? No. Is this a, okay. And do me a favor. Um, that's a separate issue. Um, send me an email on that. Let me know uh, and, and uh, send that to jose l at archertravel.com. That's a prime, prime example. You shouldn't even have to ask that. If you're having an issue, listen, you guys, if you have an issue with anything, you know, I can't get to Expedia. I, my Expedia won't open. My backs won't open. My, um, oh, I, I spoke to somebody. Somebody was mean to me at Carnival. No, 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 would be me. But anything that's bothering you, contact us right away. Don't say, is it okay? You know, I'm having a trouble with me. But yeah, contact us. You got to get on it. You know, the, the time that you're spending going, well, I'm having a problem with the reef, then take action. We need you to take action. Your clients are the most, they're the most important thing that you have in your business. You've got to, you know, be five stars, six stars, seven stars. If something happens and goes wrong, you've got to be on top of it. This is one of the things we talked about yesterday in the uh, webinar about, you know, why do you book with the travel advisor? And the very first slide that I said was, all right, because you're reachable 24 seven. If you're going to be in this business, yeah, you're going to be like an ENT or a cop or whatever. You've got to be reachable 24 seven. Especially if you've got people traveling to Europe or Asia or whatever, and things happen. That's why they rely on you. And that's how they create trust with you. And that's why if you can fix those problems, you will have those clients for life. You will have those clients for life. That's what I'm talking about. All right? All right, well, have a great day. Um, I'll see you tomorrow. I think i got a nice little location for tomorrow. Uh, it should be kind of fun. Um, so I'll see you tomorrow in the morning at 8 a little bit after 8 a.m. Pacific time. Thank you, Amanda, for all your great work this week. All right. Um, I, I told them this morning about how you how they have to watch um, how to market your business next week for working with Twitter a little bit more. You guys are going to be going down and showing them how to do more things with Twitter. Yeah, definitely. So Thanks, Jose. And I do want to say just one thing before we go. Um, and then you can say something as well. But um, I know the video went down twice on Facebook today, but it stayed up on YouTube the whole time. So I posted the YouTube link in the chat for everyone to go back and view it if you needed the replay. And I'll also just post it on the Facebook page. If you're on YouTube, you're okay. But anyone on Facebook, I just wanted to let you know. So. And that was a really good one. That was on San Diego. It was yeah. on, and that's a beautiful one. You know, you guys can use that in your marketing tools. All right. So listen, everybody, have a great day. All right, I will see you tomorrow at uh, 8 a.m., a little bit after Pacific time, with the uh, news and announcements and maybe a couple of jokes. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.